see in the present lecture we will see what will be the dynamics when particles are moving in circular path under mutual gravitational force okay so we will see what will be the dynamics when particles are moving in circular path under mutual gravitational force so we know from the basics of circular motion that whenever a particle is moving in a circular path we resolve the forces along two axes one is the radial axis that is towards the center of the circle and one is the tangential axis the net force towards the center provides the centripetal force that is mv square by r and if there is any tangential force if there is any tangential force then the motion will be non uniform the speed will be changing and if suppose there is no tangential force then the motion will be uniform circular motion okay so see basically whenever we deal with the motion of the particles in circular motion under mutual gravitational force we simply find the gravitational force on any one particle the net gravitational force on any one particle and the component of the net force towards the center will provide what the centripetal force okay so let us see case 1 when two identical particles are moving in a circle of radius r under mutual gravitational force okay two identical particles are moving in a circular path of radius r under mutual gravitational force we have two identical particles moving in a circle of radius r under mutual gravitational force okay say the mass of each particle is m so if you see at any instant they will be located they will be located at the ends of a diameter of a circle like this okay at any instant they will be located at the ends of the diameter of a circle like this say this is the center of the circle and the radius of the circle is what capital r okay so when two identical particles are moving in a circle of radius r at any instant they will be located at the ends of the diameter of the circle they will be interacted through the gravitational force on each other one will exert a gravitational force on the other so see at a particular instant they are like this at another instant this particle will be at this point this will be at this point now if you see what will be the gravitational force on any one particle you can make on either one of them because the situation is symmetric so if you make the gravitational force on this particle say fg so the magnitude of fg will be by newton's law of gravitation g m square by 2r square that is g m square by 4r square okay let it be equation number 1 now you can see that the net force on this particular particle is towards the center of the circle okay the net force on this particular particle is where towards the center of the circle there is no tangential component and since there is no tangential component you can be sure that the particle will follow what a uniform circular motion that it it will move in a circle with a constant speed it will be moving in a circle with a constant speed and since the net force acting towards the center is fg so this net force will provide what the centripetal force that is mv square by r so we will have g m square by 4r square will be what mv square by r one m will get cancelled away and one r will get cancelled away so we'll get v to be what gm by 4r whole under root okay so this will be the speed of the particle both will be moving with the same speed common speed that will be root of gm by 4r okay this is 4 okay i'm making it again okay now suppose if i need to find the time period of the particle so since the motion is ucm the motion is uniform circular motion so we can apply the equation time period will be what 2 pi r divided by the speed v so we will have 2 pi r gm by 4r under root now root of 4 will be what 2 so 
so 2 into 2 will be 4 pi and you can bring r within the radical that will be r square and that makes r cube gm okay so this will be the time period of the particle 4 pi under root r cube by gm okay so this is the case where we have seen two identical particles are moving in a circular path of radius r under mutual gravitational force see the approach what we did we have found the net gravitational force on any one particle the net force is acting where towards the center of the circle and this force will provide what the centripetal force okay now suppose if i take the case of three particles okay three identical particles moving in a circle of radius capital r now see the first key point whenever we have a case of n identical particles okay whenever we have a case of n identical particles n identical particles moving in a circle under mutual gravitational force okay so whenever we have a case of n identical particles moving in a circle under mutual gravitational force then by the property of symmetry you can say each identical particle will be located at the vertices of an n-sided polygon inscribed in a circle each identical particle will be located at the vertices of an n-sided regular polygon n-sided regular polygon inscribed in a circle okay so by symmetry we can say at any instant each particle will be located at the vertices of n-sided regular polygon inscribed in a circle okay so if you're talking about three identical particles and the three identical particles are moving in a circle under mutual gravitational force then the three identi identical particles will be located where at the vertices of an equilateral triangle which will be inscribed in a circle if you talk about four identical particles which are moving in a circle again under the influence of the mutual gravitational force then the four identical particles will be located where at the vertices of a square because in this case we will have four sided regular polygon that will be the square and the square will be inscribed in a circle okay now say when we make the figure again we will follow the same approach we will follow the same approach we will find the net gravitational force on any one particle and the net force acting towards the center will provide the centripetal force you will see by symmetry in such cases the net gravitational force on any one particle will come along the center of the circle you will see whether there are three particles or four particles the net gravitational force on any one of the particle because while finding the net gravitational force you can choose any particle the situation will be symmetric so while finding the force on any one particle you will see the net gravitational force will be directed where towards the center of the circle that means there will be no tangential component of the force since the whole net force is directed towards the center of the circle so there will not be any tangential component of the force and the motion of each particle will be what ucm uniform circular motion so we can apply the formula for the time period that is 2 pi r by v so say suppose if i'm taking three particles i'm taking the special case of three particles okay so the three particles will be located at the vertices of an equilateral triangle following the same property by symmetry they will be located at the vertices of an equilateral triangle and the triangle will be inscribed in a circle okay so suppose this is the center c 
and these are the three identical particles each of mass m and say the radius of the circle is what say capital R okay now I have to find what will be the time period of the particle now the same thing let us find the gravitational force on any one particle we can choose any of the particles say I'm choosing this as the target particle so on this particle this particle will be exerting a gravitational attraction like this say f1 and say the side of the triangle is a since it is equilateral triangle each side will be the same so you can see this is pair of masses m each with a distance of a and this particle is exerting a gravitational force f1 so by newton's law of gravitation f1 will be equal to what g m square by a square okay now if you see what will be the force exerted by the third particle on the first particle so this say this force is f2 now f2 will be along the line joining this pair that is like this now what will be the magnitude of f2 that is same as f1 you can see the pair of masses is same and the distance is also same so f2 will be equal to f1 okay now i have to find what will be the net force on the particle so you can see what will be the angle between f1 and f2 the angle will be what 60 degree so i can write the net force is equal to f1 plus f2 in the vector form and if i apply the vector addition method the palgram law of vector addition so between the vectors the angle is 60 degree so i'll get f is equal to what under root f1 square plus f2 square plus twice of f1 f2 cos of 60 degree and since f1 and f2 are equal so i can name them either as f1 or f2 say i'm naming them as f1 so it will be f1 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 square will be common i can take f1 as a common factor this will be 2 plus 2 cos of 60 degree we know cos 60 degree is half so i'll get f1 2 plus 2 multiplied by half that is 1 answer will be f1 root 3 okay so answer will be f1 root 3 now let us put the value of f1 so already we have seen the value of f1 from equation number one it's g m square by a square so i'll get f net is equal to what g m square by a square root 3 okay so this is the net force acting on any one particle now if you see what will be the direction of the net force so as we have seen in vectors since in this particular case both the forces f1 and f2 have the same magnitude so the diagonal will bisect the vector angle the diagonal will bisect the vector angle so the resultant force will be like this along the diagonal at 30 degree so this will be the resultant or the net force acting towards the center okay so suppose if i'm making a simplified figure for any one particle and this is the particle m so and this is the center c the radius is r so the net force on m is like this okay now again you can see as i told you in such cases of n identical particles when they will be moving in a circle the net gravitational force acts along the center of the circle and that you can see from the vector addition that the net force is coming towards the center of the circle it don't has any tangential component and since there is no tangential component and so the motion will be what uniform circular motion and this net force will provide what the centripetal force mv square by r so we can write gm square by a square root 3 is mv square by r 1m will get cancelled away now see uh, since in the beginning we have been given the radius of the circle we have not given the edge of the triangle a that is that a was our assumption we have given given the radius of the circle that is capital r so what we need to do we have to get a in terms of r and for getting a in terms of r we will use the 
basic geometrical property if I drop a perpendicular from C like this so if I'm dropping a perpendicular from C this is R this is 30 degree this half length will be what R cos 30 and R cos 30 will be equal to what A by 2 so we can write R cos 30 degree is A by 2 so I can write A is equal to what 2 R cos 30 degree so A will be 2 R and cos 30 is root 3 by 2 so A will come to be what R root 3 okay now we can put the value of A and after putting the value of A we can find the speed of the particle okay so suppose I'm putting the value of A in this particular equation so I'll get G M root 3 R root 3 square is V square by R that is G M root 3 R square into 3 is V square by R when R will get cancelled away and this will be root 3 so V will come to be what GM by root 3 R whole under root okay so this will be the speed of the particle and when you want to find the time period you can apply the formula 2 pi R by V so T will be 2 pi R gm by root 3 r whole under root so time period will come to be 2 pi r will come again within the radical that is root 3 r cube by gm whole under root okay so this is the expression for the time period okay so this is the case when three particles three identical particles move in a circle of radius r under mutual gravitational force